as of now, I'm only confident that I can prove to you it's it's compelling ethically and compelling aesthetically. I'm still on the on the search for why it should be compelling rationally, especially in the face of uh, science, which contradicts this th- this thing that we've known as revelatory for thousands of years called the Bible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, and what I find out, so besides that seminary professor, which I, I want to get back to in a second, because um, they all, they, they, it's funny because that, that person also puts like a heavy weight on rational arguments when talking with other Calvinists. Like, yeah, like he's reading the Bible like a rationalist, right? And then mm-hmm. when it comes to evangelism is completely throwing that out, which is like a weird dynamic. Mm-hmm. Um, gosh, I keep losing my train of thought. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so, oh, I know. So the, the, the Christians who I find super that like the Bible has to be scientific. And I, I actually, even when I was a Christian disagreed that the Bible had to be scientific, except in some of the things we talked about where I think you like, you need a literal David and a literal Psalm and, um, but I was never a young earth creationist. Like the young earth creationists are the ones who just like Cal- some Calvinists are telling other Christians, like, if you don't believe in young earth creationism, you're not a believer. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and we need to persuade you that the first 12 chapters of Genesis are like scientific, literal fact. So they're, yeah. they're like trying to, to twist this rationalism and the scientific evidence to, right. you know, so you're saying like, it, it seems like science, like doesn't show the this revelatory thing to be 100% accurate and the young earth creation is like oh no like it is and if evidence disagrees with revelation or disagrees with what the bible appears to say either you're not reading the bible right right or the science is so twisted by satan or so wrong that you can't trust it so you got to trust the revelation over the empiricism even though they're using empiricism to try to prove revelation right. But like, self-contained rationalism is just, uh, it's not, it's not rationalism. It's a, it's a, um, what do they call that? Uh, confirmation bias, right? Sure. It's all. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and you can make anything work within a self-contained, right. if you get to define the. Well, so, you know, I got in a, a side debate with a creationist. One of my, um, deconverted friends put some, like snarky meme up, it was funny, and you know, it's creationist decides to pipe in. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, "There's, there's literally no archaeological evidence for a worldwide flood, right? We have unbroken records in China at the time. If you were to, you know, if the the Earth is sixty five hundred ish years old, we have yeah. unbroken records, so the flood would have happened around like five thousand years from that time in other civilizations that aren't the Mediterranean, yeah, right." Um, and so I'm like, there's no evidence, like you're claiming this young earth creationist flood actually literally happened all over the world instead of maybe an isolated flood or some memory of floods that people are explaining with a deity. Um, and their response was like, well, I reject your evidence and I have my own evidence and my own evidence starts with the Bible. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. well, if you're rejecting evidence and like, there's no, like, there's nowhere further to go. Right. There's which no, I, which there's I think no is conversation. what that, my, that seminary professor would, right? He's saying, exactly. I reject all your evidence and I'm not going to give you any evidence because you don't need it. You right. already know it. Right. You're just fooling yourself. Um, so finally, so I think that leads to a lot of not niceness and a lot of divisiveness potentially. Mm. Um, and then I think the other thing is like total depravity that you are just evil. No matter how good you are, Right, your your righteous deeds are like filthy rags, which mm-hmm. is a very tame translation of Isaiah. Mm-hmm. Um, it would actually fit better with one of our ads. <laughs> <laughs> um, that just that leads, in my opinion, and again speaking in generalities, that leads people to devalue human life in a way that. Um, I think it's problematic, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now we're, now we're in, into anthropology, and we're also into, um, you know, what's, what's sin, which, 
which I'm which I'm totally game to talk about, but um, <laughs> it's gonna have to be a whole other episode. Total, you know, total depravity in this idea that that we are uh, by by nature um, depraved and uh, incapable of um, pleasing God without His supernatural um, infusion of grace, uh, without His without his supernatural um, impartation of righteousness, his own righteousness to us, which we don't choose, it's gifted to us, um, both, you know, positionally and uh, and, and potentially. Um, that, that assumes something about nature itself that, that I find, that I find unacceptable. Um, this uh, this great divide between supernature and nature, um, as influenced by Thomas Aquinas, um, I'm 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 more than willing to question. I think of sin more like uh, a contagion um, from from without. Mm-hmm. That that's for whatever reason providentially allowed to be a part of the visible universe, the sensible universe. Um, I I don't think I I don't think it's it's who we are. <laughs> um, I I think we are, and it's obvious to anyone who's like not biased by Calvinism. Mm-hmm. A human being is. Uh, Com- complicated <laughs> and sometimes does things out of self-interest that hurt others mm-hmm. and sometimes is able to rise above that right. and selflessly actually not do that. Yeah. And sometimes it d- just depends on how much you ate the day before. Right. And sometimes it depends on how much trauma you had as a child. Yeah. And like... Or the Calvinist would even say like the the human who's able to jump on a grenade to save his squad right yeah selflessly sacrifices himself if they're not a christian like that was still god's common grace (laughs) given to that guy in that moment that but it doesn't save him it doesn't please god right it was a hundred percent like and it's like dude that's so like like that's to me that almost that strips humanity of its imago dei right so we're created in the image of god yeah and then calvinism's like yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you jumped on the grenade to save your friend, like that wasn't you. You're totally awful. <laughs> right? This is, you get no credit this for is that. The mo- Actually, if you if you're ever within like reform circles, um, I'll, I won't speak <laughs> for you. I'll speak for me. For me, what I felt when I was in that when I was in that community was that it was really, really important for me to know. That I was terrible. <laughs> yes. It wasn't just like something that was like true. That I, but like, if I didn't believe that, there was something suspicious about my philo- my my theology. Yeah. If I didn't believe that, I was terrible. Now, that's sometimes sort of softened by the realization. Well, that's true of all of us. So I'm not. You know, I'm not saying that I'm better or. Are worse than anyone else, but at the end of the day, I don't think that really makes a difference. If you're the psychological effect of somebody being in a community, being almost forced, coerced, persuaded, uh, or manipulated, <laughs> or manipulated to to believe that um, they're on shaky ground if they start believing that they might be a decent person. Yeah, like that's are, a toxic culture. Yeah, you are such an evil being. <laughs> That you, quite literally in some sense, killed God. <laughs> you nailed, like, it's your fault that Jesus was nailed to a cross. And but, all, isn't, but isn't it God's fault though, right? Well, but I'm saying that's what the, like, the, the, that's what the, the total depravity sort of teaches, right? You're so evil that, like, you crucified Jesus, right? So it's yeah, all, it's like your fault that he had to go through what he went through. I've, I've heard, um, yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that sermon. Right. A couple times. And like what that does, like you were saying, to someone's psyche, especially if they're a kid, mm-hmm. right? 
um, and we talked about this a few episodes, like Matt Chandler, who is a Reformed pastor, you know, he had a joke where he's like, we read our kids the Noah story in a children's Bible. We're like, God killed everyone, babies and all, probably heads got bashed against rocks. Night, night. Good night. <laughs> right? Like, like um, the, the psychological effect that has where, you know, like, how can you self-actualize? Which I, very new age term, I guess. If... Mm-hmm. You, you can, you, you're constantly thinking about how terrible of a person you are. How can you justify, you know, getting out of abusive, abusive relationships? Because you're also as terrible, right? There's just so mm-hmm. much things that if, if you're believing this, you don't or can't do. Mm-hmm. Um, which is why I think it's extremely dangerous, right? You start teaching people that they're the worst thing that could, I mean, that's what gaslighters do. Mm -hmm. (laughs) right Mm -hmm. like it's your actions that made me do this right so like god becomes the ultimate gaslighter Hmm. right like it's your fault i had to flood the world it's your fault i had to right because you're so ultimately depraved i see what you're saying um yeah uh and i here's something i want to make super clear uh just for just for certain listeners, I suppose. I'm not mocking the Bible. You know, I laughed when you talked about Noah. Yeah. And I and I laughed a little bit, chuckled to myself when you talked about young earth creationism and and uh, you know these the the things that you were saying about uh, God, you know, killing Jesus because we're so bad. I you know I. There are people who wouldn't put it in those terms, but like I would say effectively believe that and hold that close to who they are. And I sort of just treated that really nonchalantly because I think that that concept is more than problematic. It's deranged. Yeah. And I believe that knowing that there are people who believe that whom I love. So I want to say this. I'm not here to mock the Bible. I'm here to mock that interpretation of the Bible. Sure. The caricature. Yeah. I think the Bible says something different, and I think the Bible is as beautiful as Calvinists say it is. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, and I, I also want to say, like, part of the reason I was using a Reformed, very famous pastor's illustration is because I think it, like, with the Noah story, I think mm-hmm. it is, like, it. he evoked it to get get a chuckle and to also make you think, like, how are you teaching yeah. that, right? Like, right. Um, so I, I'm also, at least this episode, not trying to mock the Bible. And I try actually not to mock people's um, sacred core beliefs, although I am, I wouldn't even say mocking Calvinism. I'm like the quote, like, I, I hate it, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and I think that's that's different. Like, like I'm not being Dawkins saying, you know, well, Matt, you're an idiot, right? Yeah. And all you Christians who are listening, like you're like you're stupid. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that I should try to deconvert everybody. Um, I'm just saying this specific breed of theology, I think, is extremely dangerous. Mm-hmm. Um, which I think also sort of full circling it back to Driscoll. I think it also produces produces narcissists because if you're predestined and you're chosen before the foundations of the world. And then you're given a pulpit and your church starts growing and people start telling you how awesome you are. Well, that's also predestined, right? <laughs> and so like, mm. so like, where's the, where's the, the room for actual humility, not in the word, right? Mm-hmm. But like you have a 15,000 person church and every decision you've made got you there, mm-hmm. right? And God's sovereign and he's predestined you, like... That number one, if you're a narcissist, that's a great place to work, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think it also can produce narcissism. Like I'm, I'm so blessed and I'm so wonderful that God has allowed me to do all these things. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I, and it just makes me think. It makes me thank God that um, I am. I don't have narcissism. As a hurdle. <laughs> I, I think ministry, there, there's a temptation to that in ministry. Mm. 
And I think a lot of, um, a lot of needy,